My name is Steve Smith. This is the QA Weekly. And if ever you have any questions, comments, suggestions for topics, email me at ask at tqaweekly.com. And of course, don't forget to go to patreon.com slash tqaweekly so you can help me out with this show and make this show better and better. And today's topic is about in-plane switching versus twisted pneumatic panels. So why IPS is better than TN monitors. And it's thanks to Cartfan from YouTube. So thank you for that topic suggestion. And I'm going to actually explain to you why IPS is in fact better than TN panels, despite the fact that TN panels are usually both inexpensive, have a faster response time, are more eco-friendly because they're less energy uh, monster. Basically, they take less power. And of course, they are more common. But being more common, being more energy efficient, even being faster does not make the screen better. It's one of those really weird ways of thinking about something. And because it's not like a graphics card that you can change every uh, every generation and you probably won't change your monitor every single generation it is one of those purchases that you might actually want to look at and actually spend a little bit more money on especially since this is what you're actually looking at when it comes to your computer so while tn screens are cheaper faster and less power hungry than ips screens they are more consistent they have better color accuracy. They do not lighten or show trailing, which is a good for smart uh, for smartphones, touchscreens, tablets, and they offer a clearer image and of course, stable response time. By the way, that is why they are in iPhones. That is why they are in Samsungs and Nexuses. That is why color professionals, so people that do graphic design, video editing, and even color correction, only use IPS monitors. And because of all that, that's how we know the IPS screens are better. But why? So if you're looking at the way that an IPS and a TN panel are actually constructed, we have to keep something in mind. They don't have billions of little like mechanically moving parts inside each of the screens. That would be crazy. You can't make thousands of little little shutters inside of the screens so the way they are constructed is with a liquid crystal display in the middle sandwiched between electrodes that actually allow for these liquid crystal displays to rotate light and two perpendicular polarizers that allow for the light from the back light to move all the way forward and thanks to the liquid crystal display allow for the light to either come through the first, the frontal polarizer or not. Because for any of you that know anything about 3D movies, the polarization of the light is very important to get through a polarized screen of any type. So this is how it works. So while we all have polarizers in perpendicular directions on the outside and the inside is an LCD, TN panels have a full layer electrode on either side that allows for the shutter or the liquid crystal display to actually rotate light. Whereas IPS only have thin strips of electrodes on the outside of the pixel assemblies that allow it to actually manipulate light without actually interfering with the light itself. So that's already stage one of why they have better color accuracy and why they're more consistent. Because having fewer layers means there are fewer chances of error. It also makes it harder to make the IPS panel because of that, because there are strips. But what it essentially does is if the light passes this way and it's supposed to be completely open, it will twist the light so it passes through the polarization of the screen as an open shutter. So if all the R red, uh, the the red, green, and blue are completely open, you'll see white. If they're completely closed, you won't see anything at all. So this makes it very good for things such as retina displays. Now what also makes the color shifting not a thing for IPS is the fact that, you know what, TN has like a square block. It's red, green, and blue, one beside the other. And the fact that you also have the electrode and the polarizer all in the way means that the color shifts at different angles. Now IPS gets rid of that problem by having no electrode in the way, but also in redesigning the way the pixel is made itself. So the red, green, and the blue in Japan displays 
are actually in a chevron shape, so like a boomerang, one beside the other. Because of this, it allows for an equal amount of light for very specific angles to actually be represented. In fact, of not having anything over it except for the actual polarizers. So this allows for the screen to have a more true color gamut. But if you really want to be really truthful about it, you know what? TN panels also have the worst color processors. They have 6-bit color processing, which means you'll get very dynamic color, but you won't get very accurate color reproduction out of it. Some may claim 8-bit color processing, but it's dithering. It's not that accurate, people. IPS actually has 8-bit native color processing, and newer ones have 10-bit color processing, which can actually reproduce quite a bit more of the 16.7 million colors that we're supposed to be able to see. So you know what? That 10-bit actually is far better than the 6-bit that you can actually expect from a TN. So it is possible to buy a true native 10-bit color processing. Now where IPS suffers in comparison to TN is response time. These are screens that are normally meant for professional users. If you are a gamer, you want a screen that has an 8 millisecond or less response time, which is why a lot of gamers buy TN panels anyway. Considering they're faster and cheaper, who wouldn't? But if you are able to find an IPS panel that has an 8 or 10 bit color processor, obviously it's either one or the other, and it has 8 milliseconds or less, you have found yourself a pretty color accurate gaming screen, and it will probably cost you two to three, maybe four times more expensive than a TM panel. This is the thing you're staring at the entire time you have your computer. Whether or not it's the same computer the entire time, you'll probably have the same screen for many, many years to come. So if you want a truer color that is more color accurate, that is suited to your needs, you might as well flip the dollar for IPS if you can afford it. Whether or not you want to be the talk of the town or just want to be able to maybe pick up graphic design or color correction or even make your own videos for YouTube. So think about that the next time you're out shopping for a computer screen. It might be worth your while to spend a little bit more on a better screen. Just keep in mind that if you're going to be gaming, it has to be 8 milliseconds or less. If it costs more, flip for it because if you are a gamer and you buy anything greater than 8 milliseconds, the lag will kill you, especially if you're playing games that are FPS. So like the show if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, leave your comments, questions, and suggestions for topics down below. Don't forget to go to patreon.com slash QA weekly to help me out with this show and have a great day.